U.S. plans for military intervention run into a staunch no from Putin. Let's see, what until recently has been exemplary behavior by the United States and thus should be emulated by the Russian government on the world stage? For the period from 1945 to 1994, the U.S. made 55 military interventions against lawfully elected governments and made more than 30 attempts to repress national liberation movements. These include the Korean and Vietnam Wars, the intervention in Lebanon in 1958, in Cuba in 1961, in the Dominican Republic in 1965, the overthrow of the Iranian Prime Minister Mossadegh in 1953, of President Arbez in Guatemala in 1954, of Indonesian President Sukarno in 1965. If one considers the last 30 years, the USA government has done similar worldwide by participating in the following armed conflicts. On October 25, 1983, the U.S. Army, under the false pretext of protecting American students, invaded the small island nation of Granada. In fact, the purpose was the overthrow of the elected government because that government had decided to ally itself with socialist countries. On March 25, March 25, 1983, the U.S. Army invaded the Republic of Panama under the pretext of protecting the American people and the restoration of democracy in that country. The actual purpose of the invasion was the removal of dictator Manuel Noriega, a longtime U.S. ally and CIA collaborator who wanted to separate himself and his country from USA influence. On March 24, 1999, armed forces of NATO began an air offensive against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The rationale for the attack, an ethnic, ethnic conflict in the province of Kosovo. As a result of the bombings, more than 1,000 Yugoslav military personnel and approximately 2,000 civilians were killed, including 400 children. The infrastructure of an independent European country was destroyed. In Kosovo, taking advantage of the chaos and governmental vacuum, illicit drug and human organ traffickers from the Kosovo Liberation Army seized political power. Thousands of Serbs were victims of the militants. Tens of thousands became refugees. On October 1, 2001, using the attack on the World Trade Center as a pretext, the U.S. Army invaded and occupied Afghanistan. According to various sources, victims of the fighting totaled as many as 50,000 civilians. Half a million Afghanis became refugees. On March 20, 2003, the U.S. Army, under a knowingly false pretext that the government of Saddam Hussein in Iraq was producing weapons of mass destruction attacked a sovereign country. No evidence of such weapons was subsequently found. That did not stop the USA government, however, from long-term occupation and physical destruction of the country, nor the execution of Saddam Hussein, nor plunging Iraq into chaos, which continues to this day. The number of deaths of Iraqis, mostly civilians, at the moment approaches one million. On March 19, 2011, NATO troops, among whom U.S. Army troops played the major role, launched an attack on the Libyan Zimaheria. With military support from the USA and NATO, rebels overthrew the government and seized control of the country. During the fighting, more than 50,000 people were killed. On August 21, 2013, USA President Barack Obama gave an ultimatum to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The USA government planned military invention again, citing the presence of chemical weapons in Syria. Only the intervention of Russia and of President Putin at the last minute prevented the potential for hundreds of thousands more victims and for turning Syria into another focus of destruction for American democracy. In 2014, the USA government backed a military coup in Ukraine 
Ukraine. The USA government did everything that it could to facilitate the coming to power of neo-Nazis. Ukraine now stands on the brink of civil war and genocide, in fact, past that point already. It was exactly such a role model that former Ambas Ambassador Russia McFaul tried to present as a lost ideal for the world. Instead, USA policy and action represent shameless and systematic violation of international law, a violation of basic human freedoms, hypocrisy, double standards, and a willingness to shed the blood of inhabitants of other countries in order to achieve some illusory goal. Today the U.S. has little chance to destroy Russia. Former Ambassador McFaul, the USA does not have the moral authority it once had during the 20th century. This makes America today, alas, hardly an inspiring country. Thus, in order to gain anything from a new confrontation with Russia, the United States is obliged to provide a new role model. Today marks 15 years since USA intervention in Yugoslavia. It is thus a good occasion to think about what would happen if Russia itself decided to imitate the role model provided by the USA through its interventionist policies. Fortunately, Russia will follow.